Santa Paula, California is a small historic town located just over an hour north of Los Angeles and about 15 minutes east of Ventura. Although it's small, it's packed with history and interesting things to do. Here's my list of the top 10 things to do in Santa Paula. Number one, stay at the historic and haunted Glen Tavern Inn. This is the primary reason I came to Santa Paula. I read about this inn and I was intrigued. It did not disappoint. If you don't stay, at least come into the lobby to step back in time. Number two, visit the oil museum. California's oil industry began in Santa Paula. Oil was discovered in 1880, leading to the formation of Union Oil Company, which is now Unical. Before you go to the museum, make sure a docent will be there to give you a tour. The museum is interesting on its own, but the upstairs offices and apartments are available only with the docent, and the docent's stories bring the history to life. Number three, appreciate the warning. This was the other reason I wanted to come to Santa Paula. There is history behind this sculpture. Back in 1925, William Mulholland was the chief engineer for what's now the Department of Water and Power. He had built a gravity arch dam on the Hollywood Reservoir that's still standing today. He designed the same dam about 41 miles east of here that was called the St. Francis Dam. Construction started in March of 1925. It finished a year later in March of 1926. During the construction, he decided to add five feet and then he added another five feet for a total of 10 feet on the dam without taking the foundation into consideration. It took two years to completely fill that dam. Mulholland went out, he inspected it, all was good. And then about 12 hours later, in March of 1928, the dam broke. It was midnight when the dam broke. The water that had taken two years to build up behind the dam rushed out in a little over an hour on a path to the ocean about 60 miles away. A call came in to Santa Paula around 1.30 a.m. warning them, a flood is coming your way. These two guys got on their motorbikes and drove around, waking the town and getting people to safety. Over 600 people were lost in the St. Francis Dam disaster, and that count would have been much higher had it not been for these two men. I'll admit, when I envisioned what this monument would look like, Motorcycles had not even crossed my mind. I envisioned them running from house to house to awake and warn the sleeping residents. Next to the warning is number four, the floating granite ball. This sculpture weighs 8,800 pounds and it's a true engineering feat. First, it's beautiful, right? The ball rests on this pedestal, but when the fountain is flowing, the water comes from under the ball, creating a near frictionless mechanical fluid bearing, and the ball rotates counterclockwise on the pedestal, just from that thin layer of water. It's fascinating. Across the street from these two statues is number five, the historic Santa Paula train station. This is the historic Santa Paula train depot. It was built in 1887 and it was a regular hub of train activity until 1934. It's no longer used on a regular basis, but there are trains that travel between Fillmore, the next town over, to Santa Paula for the day and then back again. And they have special Halloween trains and Christmas trains, but also, just regular weekend excursions if you're interested in an historic train trip. Across the railroad tracks from the train station is number six, 
the Agriculture Museum. Santa Paula is the citrus capital of the world, so an agriculture museum makes sense. Now, I'll admit, I was a little skeptical about whether or not I would enjoy this, but I absolutely loved it. It was so interesting. Across the street from the train station is number seven. This is the Morton Bay Fig Tree. It's located right across the street from the Santa Paula Train Depot. It is 142 years old. A Methodist minister planted this tree in 1879 to celebrate the birth of his fourth daughter. Number eight. Take a walking tour around the city to see the nine murals that are painted on different buildings that depict the history of Santa Paula from its earliest residents, the Chumash Indians, to the present day. Number nine. Take a walk through the historic downtown district. You'll see things like this very cool clock, the old courthouse. They have these huge hanging baskets of flowers, this cute little alleyway, and a lot more. Number 10, visit the Santa Paula Art Museum. The current exhibit is by contemporary impressionistic landscape artist, Erin Hansen. They had pieces of her art from 2012 through the present, and it was really interesting to see how her style has evolved. There were other artists' work in the galleries, but it was Erin Hansen's exhibit I was most enamored with. Here are some of the places that I ate and really enjoyed while I was here. Enzo's Italian restaurant is the restaurant in the Glen Tavern Inn. It's fine dining, dinner only, and reasonably priced. I ate here twice, and it was excellent both times. Chef David's Kitchen and Catering is a sandwich shop with good food, generous portions, and great prices. And it's in this very cool alley with all this art. the best barbecue. If you're a meat eater, then this is the place for you. More food than I could eat and really, really good barbecue. Flight 126 Cafe. I ate here on my last day and I wish I had known about it sooner. They had a really good brunch menu and my brunch was delicious. Its patio faces the runway of Santa Paula Airport, so you can see the small planes taking off and landing. This isn't everything that there is to do in Santa Paula. This is just everything that I did. There is the Santa Paula Aviation Museum, which is open on the first Sundays of the month. There's a place called the Loose Caboose that I have heard about and didn't have a chance to go see. There is the Santa Paula Theater District, and there is probably more. Anyway, I hope this helps you find your adventure. Thank you for watching.